Hey Derek, did you notice the mercury levels in that king salmon you just caught? No I didn't, why? Because that particular kind of salmon is known to have high mercury levels from eating smaller organisms that have high levels. It's actually all due to a simple process called biomagnification. Do you know how important trophic levels are to an ecosystem? Yes, wildlife biologists look at them as the economy of energy and it all starts with our sun. Correct, in an ecosystem the trophic levels begin with organisms that rely on photosynthesis to survive. Plants for instance. They are the primary consumers, and secondary consumers are called herbivores, which eat the plants and next are the carnivores who eat the herbivores. Exactly, energy from the sun is sued by the plants, and is eventually transferred from plants to the carnivores. Energy, however, is not the only thing that can be transferred through the trophic levels. Oh really? What else can there be? Chemicals can also be transferred all the way from plants to carnivorous specimens in a process called biomagnification. I do seem to remember hearing about biomagnification before. Isn't it where chemicals become more and more concentrated as their ice in the trophic levels? Yes, it usually only occurs in aquatic ecosystems, like the Great Lakes, where chemicals produced by Humans from industrial plants and factories make their way into bodies of water, and then plants absorb them. Herbivores eat the plants, and carnivores eat the herbivores making the chemicals more and more concentrated at each level, right? Precisely, some of these chemicals involved with biomagnification include DDT, PCBs, and heavy metals like mercury and lead. What kinds of problems do these chemicals cause? Will they affect humans? The side effects vary from chemical to chemical but on average they can potentially cause cancer, reproduction problems, birth defects, and problems with nervous systems. In all herbivores and carnivores including humans. That's kind of ironic that humans releasing toxins into bodies of water are in turn affected by those toxins. What can we do to protect the aquatic ecosystems from these chemicals? The most important thing to do is prevention. If we can prevent the release of the chemicals into bodies of water, the environment can begin its gradual return to normal. So all we need to do is prevent factories and industrial plants from releasing their chemical wastes into waterways. Factories are only a part of the problem. Chemicals from agricultural runoffs and airborne pollutants can also contaminate water and these problems are much harder to deal with. I see. Well we should at least start with banning certain chemicals from being produced so that they never make it into waterways and also try cutting down on pollution by taking more environmentally friendly transportation. Those are some good ideas. DDT and PCBs have already been banned and their presence in the environment is already declining. That is good to hear. I'm glad people are taking action against the chemicals in our water. The aquatic ecosystems are a very important part of our life. If we want to keep them healthy, and at the same time, ourselves healthy we must do all that we can to prevent bodies of water to be infected of chemicals as well as rid them of all present contamination. Hey Derek, do you want to hear a joke? Why certainly. Okay, knock knock. Who is there? Boo. Boo who? You don't have to cry, we only had to make an environmental studies video.